Hello everyone, I'm D-Mind, the mind of one and all, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Memo. So this is the second visual novel that I came across while looking for games to play, and apparently the creator of this visual novel used to work at Dishan Media. Um, it, he made it before he joined Dishan Media, I believe, no? Yeah, and if you don't know what Dishan Media made, they made, um, they made dysfunctional systems which is on Steam and they made Juniper's Not, which is free. You can go and download that if you want to. And I actually quite like this, um, the Juniper's Not. This uh, dysfunctional system was alright, like nothing great but it wasn't bad. But yeah, so this was made before then I think, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so before we jump to the game, let's check the settings. We got pretty normal settings, we got tech speed, mm, might want to increase tech speed a bit. Mm, by a bit, I mean a lot. And then we got display, window, full screen, transitions, show all or none, we show all, see, skip scene or all, yeah. And skip of the choices, they have skip options, so that's pretty good. And then vo your separate volume slider, so yeah. Nothing, it got all the requirements I would like in a visual novel. And then there's even a gallery, which of course you haven't unlocked anything. Alright. Um, Alright. Okay, so I do not know how long this one is. I don't, I, sh I don't think it's that long though. I think it should be fairly short. Maybe one or two videos. Yeah. All right. So without further ado, let's begin. And we start off in a train. This is a train, right? Yeah. The metro shifts with, with timidly, back and forth as it eases towards my destination. Although it's about the time in the morning when men and women make their way to work and children skip off to their schools, there are barely any signs of life on board. It's not barely any signs of life on board, it's there is no one on board. You couldn't be bored to draw people. Which is quite typical in visual novels, they couldn't be bored to draw people. I gaze out the window where a vaguely familiar landscape indifferently greets me. I am Hashigawa Seiji, and my family and I have been moving from place to place for as long as I can remember. Our home and life wait our home and life change every time my father's job uproots us from each residence. Oh, so you've been moving on. Moving was sickening at first, but I'm used to it now. After eleven years of hopping around the country I finally have my own place. Old apartment wait yeah. A tight old apartment with dry cracks on the walls. It was the best I could rent on a whim. I think I lived in this city a long time ago since it seems familiar. If, if so, the city must have changed drastically since the last time I was here. Or maybe I just don't remember what the city was like because I recognize some of the buildings. Such a thing is trivial anyways. I hope this school is not too difficult. I managed to find the place in time and undergo the, the transfer preparation procedure without much delay but I haven't visited the campus yet. I wonder what it's like. Idly, I glance around the train. What was the stop again? I glance at the station notifier, don't tell me you missed the stop. Oh, this, it's this one. Alright, you didn't. Releasing my grip on the handlebar, I step out of the train. Seiji? Huh? It's a good. Yeah, it has to be. Well, I kinda know what kind of vision of this is while going in. How would she recognize this? I turned to see a girl with green eyes and, br and her brown hair tied in a ponytail. I assume this girl like, we used to be friends with her when we were young, and then we moved around the country, then now we're back. Did I see her on the train before? She's standing in the same car I had been sitting, but I don't recall seeing anyone doing the ride. The girl's hair waves calmly with the leaking breeze from the station tunnel. She blinks twice as she peers into space, then exhales and relaxes her shoulders while shaking her head a little in the process. I don't know what's on her mind. I'm not sure if she's the one that called my nickname, but instead of asking, I gaze at her listlessly, oh, oblivious to the extent of time passing by me. The sliding doors close with a clank, and the growing hum of the electric motors reaches an apex as the train departs from the platform, thus smoothly removing my opportunity to raise the question I wish to ask her. What am I doing? Oh, that's right, I'm creepily staring at some random stranger on the train. Well, she called your name, so you should be like, do I know you or something? 
I shake my head. I shouldn't be looking at ghosts right now. I make my way towards the school, climbing up the stairs of the station. So you're just gonna ignore her? Didn't she call your name? Or is she like, Seiji, like whispering in the background you thought you heard it? Yeah. But the image of that girl occupies my mind. Have I seen her somewhere before? Most likely you have. It seems to have it seems to take an ever increasing amount of steps to take me to my destination. What kind of school is this? Oh well, I guess they didn't put too much into the building's design. I arrive at what I assume is the schoolyard. The lawn house the lawn houses a building with a sign that reads the same as on my emissions paper. The structure that holds the name place is painted the colour of clouds. Couldn't you just say white? And towers four stories high, a tree breaks the monotony of the yard. This probably is in the front of the school, but this is the place. For a school day, it looks surprisingly vacant. I look around for someone to ask for directions. More like empty instead of surprisingly vacant. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a glimpse of a dark haired girl. Oh, the second girl. Oi, excuse me. Oi, yeah. How sophisticated. Oi. Hmm? Are you busy? Not particularly. Why, do you need something? Well... Ah, you're a transfer student, aren't you? I'm not going to ask how she came to that correct conclusion and move on. Yeah, and do you... I'll show you around. Okay? Wait, what? Okay? What is this? Yeah, I'll show you around. Okay? Uh, maybe I have to give her that voice now. No, that'd be terrible. Know where I can find the student services office. Those words never have the chance to leave my mouth as this strange girl drags me around the campus on a tour, stopping occasionally to greet her acquaintances. The music room is located here and... Uh... Yes, tr yes transfer student? I saw the need to go somewhere. Eh? So soon? Yeah, sorry, do you know where the student services office is? Hmm, I haven't gone in a while, so I'm not sure. But I think it's at the end of the hall. Thanks. She looks like earlier like can I go back? Oh. Oh wait, I can. Alright, cool. I thought I couldn't. Yeah, she looks she like like she's unsatisfied. <laughs> oh well. The name's Kazumi, by the way. You want say Kazumi? Name Seiji. Are you a senior? Nah, junior. Eh, that's a shame. I was hoping that we'd be in the same class. Oh, so she's my senpai. Why? No reason. <laughs> oh, come on, what kind of... This is in real life. I mean, there's no way you can just go in and then go be like, Oh, I hope we'd be in the same class. <laughs> and be like, oh, they already won you all. They already won you so badly. So unrealistic. Alright. I'll see you around. Bye. Wait, that's me. Bye. You can ask me for directions anytime you're lost, okay? Thanks. Alright. After that, I go to student services, get my information and schedule, and the teacher leads me to my class 2B. This is Hase... Oh, this is your teacher. This is Hasegawa... Hasegawa Seiji, and he will be joining you from today onwards. Be nice to each other, okay? The girl from the train is in here, isn't she? Oh, and by the way, if you give him me any trouble, I'll personally make sure that you get some draconian punishment tree. What is draconian punishment tree? No, ten times over. Understood? Creepy. Please take the empty seat near the window. Uh, okay. I put my book back down and place myself in the chair. Psst. Oh yeah, knew it. It's her. I turn and I catch a paper football directed at my face. The culprit is the girl from the train. And watch out! And your hair... I didn't notice it. Oh, actually I did kind of notice it on the train, but your hair looks a bit weird. Maybe a bit too messy. Oh well. Uh, She makes a fist and points towards it. What? She wants you to read the paper. She points to me. Oh, she means the football. I unfold it. This handwriting. It's indecipherable. It appears as if a quadru 
a quadruped animal miraculously held a pen and tried to draw the neat letter human human scribble onto paper. Oh, you shouldn't tell her that to her face. I can't read it. What? I can't read it. Your handwriting is terrible. Dad, don't tell her that. Just say you can't read it. Don't. The last part is not necessary. It's not necessary. Yep, see, you pissed her off. Why is she, I, is she gonna be the Sundari of this game? So, oh god. Rooftop lunch. What did you say? She said rooftop lunch. Rooftop lunch. Go to the rooftop when lunch starts. Why? The teacher's gonna call you on it. Just do it! Yeah, like shot at the buff, okay? Just do it! Hasegawa Sage, turn around! I knew it. Are you gonna get draconian punishment? Yes. Nope, you didn't. The class position ends uneventfully. I decided to follow up that ghost note. Um, she, her note, you couldn't read her note. You had to listen to what she had to say. I arrive on the vacant rooftop. The sound of distant conversation fills the air. What does she want from me here? And I just noticed that but the music has been gone for quite a while now. Makes it a bit too quiet. Ten minutes have passed, that girl is nowhere around here. Don't tell me this is your idea of a prank. Or does this game have no music? I know, I quite want I heard music. Before? Ah, uh, who am I kidding? She has no reason to prank me, right? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Where is she? I'll give her a mighty scolding for messing with me. A mighty scolding. Yeah. I begin to search for her. Not here. I walk to the other side of the rooftop and look around. I see a girl about to fall over while she's sitting up. Sleeping. She tips over. This could be bad. Blood rushes to my legs as I run to catch her before she, si she hits the ground. Are you alright? Wait. Oh, it's her. Why is she? Alright. I'm not even gonna question it. You can't question it when you play visual novels. And that's something I come to re understand. You can question it, but don't question, don't take it too hard. It's the girl from this morning, so this was where she was waiting for me. She rests in my arms as if nothing happened, inhaling and exhaling slowly. She's probably in a deep sleep. Holding her like this feels odd, as if I'm not holding an entire person but part of one. Even taking into in account that part of her body is being supported by the ground, she can't be over 100 pounds, let alone 90. It, look, it took little to no effort to keep her from falling. Hey, wake up. No reply. Her countenance is as calm as before. Are you a narcoleptic or something? I suspect it. She doesn't reply. Slap her awake? Uh, that would be bad. <laughs> Guess she's not cold. Hmm. This is going to be a misunderstanding when she opens her eyes and see you holding her. She's going to be like, <gasps> Baka! And then she you or something or pushes you away. Oh, she's waking up. Uh-oh. And she's drooling on me. Hey, you. I pinch her, I pinch her cheek. Um. Finally. It's noon, wake up. Knew it! <laughs> She jumps hit butting me in the process. You! What did you do to me? I knew it. What? I didn't do anything. Liar, I can't trust pet. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me. Oh wait, I mean what were you doing? Napping. I could see that. Anyways. Wait, hold that thought. Before that, who are you? I'm the... Weird guy. Weird guy. Alright, Binato Liz. You! Alright, you look like a smartass. Maybe I'll give you a smartass voice. I don't know whether I can do one. Indeed. Kosuke, alright. No, wait. No, wait. Who's Kosuke? Ah! Shortly after he breathes her. Wait, he breathes her answer over her shoulder. She strikes the creep with a thunderous blow. Who are you calling a creep? You of course, who else? Oh, so you're going to call me Takas Takashi Kosuke, King Four Eyes of the School. King Four Eyes. 
What kind of guy would acknowledge himself as King for us? I ignore the weird guy and turn my attention back towards the goal. Wait, I can unclip. Maybe I should save. Yeah. Alright. By the way, you never finished your sentence. Wow, you just completely disregard him. What's your answer? I can't trust this guy's information. It's Liz. You dare interrupt the kid. That's your turn, by the way. What? For a king, it meant it's meant to taunt you. Lies. It means that I see all. Yeah. Um. Oh, so are you that dense? Then you can't be as smart as if you're that dense. Smart as you're, as the name imply, smart and an ass. You're just dense. A dense ass? Right. Look, lunch period is going to end soon. I'm gonna start walking back. Hey, hey, Liz. I mean, let's go. Why do I have to go with you? Eh? Oh wait, she's right. Why does she have to go with me? I don't know. Whatever. She brushes past me. Uh, which ghost should I go for? I don't know. I know we haven't really... Um... Get to know them much yet. She brushes past me. You gonna come or not? Yeah, in a moment. She seems like she's gonna be the cinder of that. Or at least somewhat like that. Bastard! I can hear Koski shouts as I lock the door behind me. Lock the door? So you locked him on the roof? So what do you call me for? Nothing. Nothing at all. There had to be some reason. What part of nothing don't you understand? <sighs> so if you... Oh, that's the teacher. So if you carry over the axe... Uh, first day here and I'm already sitting through a lecture. I look around the classroom. Half the students are struggling to keep their eyes open, and three are already asleep. I wonder what they are dreaming about. They look so tranquil and happy. Hey, you there, wake up! Without giving them a chance to follow up on a command, Miss Akiyama holds chalk at their now unfortunate aching foreheads and with blistering speed. Oh! Ouch. Anyways, now you distribute the... This is still pretty boring. I lean back in my chair. Move it. Hmm? I can't move it. I can't see the board. I lean to the right a little. I still can't see. Left this time. This is a little irritating. Move it, you ape. Yep, she got me an ape. That does it. Hey, what's your problem? She's just a cinderella like that. Um, Miss Hasegawa. Crap. First day here and already giving me trouble? I told you not to mess around in my class, I'll... Ugh. Afternoon class just passed, but uneventfully, and I was harshly scolded by Miss Yakiyama after school. Huh. That was your frightening experience. At least you didn't got the draconian punishment, or whatever that was. Or is that the draconian punishment? Her angry voice carries with, carries with it a shrinking, a sinking feeling, comparable to the despair of inevitable doom. And it's just as scary. I stroll the empty white hall, searching for the exit. Occasionally, I can catch a glimpse of the club activity outside, but even with that sense of cardinal direction, the location of the exit still escapes me. I approach a pair of double doors at the end of the hall and, be and open them. Oh, we're in the library. I enter what I assume is the library. The sound of my footsteps are muffled by the carpet lining the floor. We're gonna meet the other girl now. Well, we did meet her, but I mean, see her again. Besides the noise of club activities outside, and the sound of my footsteps, the room is completely silent. I saunter around the room, occasionally peering out some windows. Who's there? Oh, it's listen. I turn to see today's annoying girl sitting at a table by the largest window in the library. Yo, yo. I try and fail to make a casual gesture. Oh, it's you again. I see you like picture books. Yeah... You're not gonna... I knew it. What are you talking about? It's a chemistry textbook. I'm studying. Oh, I think I can see the title. I idiot ah, She called me Baka. Uh, I knew it. I could pay her for the Cinderay. The Cinderays are normally... Yeah, most Cinderays normally have a ponytail now that I think of it. Liz regains your composure in a heartbeat. So what do you want? Not... 
Oh, wait. Do you know where the entrance is? Yeah, you go out the way you came in. Walk to the end of the hall, take the stairs down, turn right afterwards. Turn left at room 108, turn right and... Wait, stop, I can't remember that. Actually, I kind of can. Follow the hallway down, go right, turn left at room 108, turn right. But then you interrupt the door. So what? Now, you need a map too? You're a lot dumber than I thought. Don't they have maps or something? And don't call me dumb. And it shouldn't be that difficult to leave school. They pass them around out doing orientation. What about now? Dumb person, dumb luck. I don't want to hear that from someone who reads books intended for kindergartners. That's none of your business. Oh, so she is reading. I thought she was reading a chemistry book. <laughs> you... Lizzie, what are you? Where are you? The voice that owns these words is bright and energetic. Can it be? Yep. Lizzie! I'm here, Kayumi. Ah, I've been looking all over for you, Lizzie. Oh, it's you from this morning. Yo. I didn't know you were so outgoing, Lizzie. Flirting already? Ho ho ho. With this bird brain, don't make me laugh. So I got demoted to bird brain. Anyways, Lizzie, could you help me out with something? Sure, what do you need? Well, as vice press, they told me to help do some things for the Founders Festival, but I got caught up with some cat... Some what? I mean errands, and I couldn't finish them. Cat... Hmm... Oh, what, what's that with a CA? Hmm. Isn't that your fault? Understood. Where to? That was fast. She's unexpectedly gullible. Ah, thank you so much, Lizzie. You're a lifesaver. Oh, and Seiji? Hmm? Since you're here, could you help out as well? I don't see why not, but on one condition. What's that? Could you show me where the entrance is later? Sure. Well then, let's go. Alright. Kajimi takes Liz by the hand and pulls her along. I place my hands in my pockets and follow behind them as they cheerfully chat away, oblivious to anything else. Alright. I don't see how anyone can get around in this place. The campus is huge. Well, the school is split into different sections for different grade levels, so even though they're all physically connected, there are places you never need to go throughout the year. I see. But still, it's a city unto itself. By the way, what is the thing you help you need help with? Yeah. You just agree, that's the thing, you just agree without even knowing what the help is. I have to post maps of the schools at various locations so our visitors don't get lost. Convenient that you that we just so happen to get lost beforehand before this. Oh perfect. Lizzie, you've been quiet for a while now. Is something wrong? Bathroom, be right back. I think it's not the bathroom, it's something else. Liz explodes into a sprint to the nearest bathroom door. Oh my. Let's wait for her. Sure. Or maybe she does want to go bathroom. Who knows. So, do you like this school? Besides, the part besides the part that doesn't that go well with my terrible sense of navigation, it's alright. Hehe, <laughs> I see. So what about you? What about you? I like it a lot. There's many things to do and so many cute friends like Liz that I can make. I tap my fingers against my elbow a bit impatiently. I'd rather go straight home than stay and help, but then again, I can't ditch her for what she did this morning. With or without my consent. Sorry about that, let's go. Oh, so she really did just go bathroom. Kajumi divides the stacks of mat in half and steps to it to and steps forward to hand a pile to me and a pile to Liz. Is that all of them? Yep, how about splitting up everything here in 30 minutes? Sounds good. Oh, but Seiji is new to the school. Yeah, how do you know where to go to post them? Why don't you go with him, Lizzie? Me? With him? Ha! Don't make me laugh. There she goes again. The Cinderella, yep. I can immediately call. I can sense the Cinderella sense. Yes. But if this is for Kazumi, it's okay, I guess. It's south then. Lizzie, I'll take the north. You and CG can take the south. Understood. I'm not done shy. 
Well, let's get it over with. What's your dad doing? Nothing, nothing at all. Coming or not? Don't tell me what to do, but Brain. Great. Well, see ya. Bye. Talk to you later, Kazumi. The subsequent half hour was terrible. They shouted at me for the oddest and most minuscule of things. Even though she would run around next to, into, and generally near me, annoying me a great deal in the process. Each shout, tuck, bump, and glare felt like a blow to my skull. Seji, I'd kill her if I could. Wait, 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 what? Wait, you, you wanna kill her? Wait, what? Wait, what? Is that what you just said? I'd kill her if I could? Imagine if this is the plot twist. We turn out to be a serial ki a psychopathic serial killer. <laughs> oh my god, that would be amazing if the game Shelly went for that twist. I kill if I could. Like they just give subtle hints like that, and then it's like, oh, they played off like nothing. And then Shelly at the end, you you actually kill her, and you're like, yes, I've been waiting for this moment all months or all week, and now you shall suffer as you kill her horribly. Oh well. What? Oh, nothing, just narrating a bit. Alright, so Seiji might be a psychopathic killer. Note that. Kayumi, we're back! Huh? She's not back, isn't she? Although we came back a bit late due to some setbacks on the way, Kayumi is nowhere to be seen. A note placed on the nearest desk catches my attention and I grab it. Dear Liz, Seiji. I'm terribly sorry, but something came up and I had to leave to run some errands. Please have a safe trip home. What's that, Seiji? Uh, no, Kazumi left. She says to go home since she had some errands to run. And I don't recall giving you permission to call me that. I see. Well, later. She turns around and walks out the door. But you still never showed her to the entrance. He, I mean, showed Seiji to the entrance. Though I guess he could look at the map now that they're posted around school. That's the whole purpose. Bye. Like this morning, there are a few passengers on board the train. Is it because it's a small city? There's no one at all. Wait, I can't put this back. Oh well. The only imminent sounds are the sounds of wheels moving on the tracks, occasional announcements, and. You again? Why are you following me? Huh. I'm not. This is the train I take home. Stalker. My alibi is completely ignored. Whatever, I'll destroy you if you try anything. Sure, it's Marshall in here. The train enters and exits an opening in a hill. The light at the end of the tunnel shines behind a giant crimson wheel. The ferris wheel stands by the harbour, advancing in slow but resolved revolutions. Are we gonna go to the ferris wheel one of these days? With our... um... with the girl we choose, I would assume. It holds my gaze unlike the countless dead edifices that, that that covers the city. I think you have an extra debt there. Somehow this artful structure feels like it is watching the entire city by itself. I'm sure I've seen it before. You've been to this city before. Seiji? What is it? Alright, but I think this is a good place to end it. Alright, so this is your... Rather typical high school setting visual novel. I'm still on the setting that I'm, I mean, I'm still on the um, suspicion that CG might be a psychopathic killer, but we'll find that out later. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.